Luke 2, 8 to 15. And there were shepherds, sorry, I need my focus. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared in them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and, the, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Don't worry, my boy. You'll be nice and warm. I wrapped you in your mother's old blanket. <laughs> Some start we've had, huh? A 90-mile walk, just so you could get born in a stable. <laughs> you know, if we were back home in Nazareth, oh, I could build you a fine crib. But here, no crib. I have to put you to sleep in the hay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. I had my own visit from an angel. write it down so I wouldn't forget what it said. Joseph, son of David, fear not to take Mary for your wife. For what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. And he will save the people their sins. Did you hear that? You will save us from our sins. You will be, you are the Messiah. And, and I've been chosen to be the Messiah's Papa. I do not know how it will happen, but I'm, I'm done doubting. I want to tell you how happy that you make me. No, it's more than happiness. It's, what did the shepherds say the angels told them? Oh, they, they bring Good news. Great joy. <laughs> yes. That's what it is. It's joy. That's what you bring. My sweet, beautiful boy. You bring me so so much joy. So much joy. I love that phrase. You know, sometimes when 
a video is done well, you can feel the emotion of the people, right? And, and, and if we accomplish anything in the next half hour, I hope that I can walk you through that we actually feel Joseph's emotion. Because in, in what we have in Scripture, in, chap, in Matthew chapter 1, there's a roller coaster of emotion. I want to take a look at that this morning uh, and, and really feel his heart. Uh, if you're a kid in here with us in grade 9 or 10 or younger and you take notes, uh, while I'm talking in the next few minutes, I don't have Skittles, but I do still have some Christmas Rice Krispie Squares. So uh, you can show those notes to me after and I'll give you some of those. So let's pray before we go to God's Word. Our Father in heaven, that phrase, so much joy. As Joseph said, as he looked at that baby, you bring me so much joy. And joy is something that is missing in most of us. It's missing in our world. This morning as we look at Joseph, Father, we just ask that you would let us see joy. Let us see Jesus. And the hope and the love and the peace, give us a glimpse of this. Let us feel this this morning. So God, we ask you to show up in a way that makes us all experience your joy today in a new way. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 1. And uh, I think this morning all the scriptures will be on the screen today, but sometimes when we have it open in front of us, it just helps us solidify it in our minds and know that this is, this is actually what scripture says. Have you ever been faced with something, whether it's good or bad, faced with something in your life, a situation or whatever, that you know your life's never going to be the same? Something's going on in your life that's really changing the whole trajectory or changing the whole horizon of your future. And I kind of think that's where Mary and Joseph are right at this point. The, the angels showed up to both of them, but separately. And, and I wonder how different it would have been for them if the angel had showed up and told them this when they were together. Then they could actually process it together and work through it together. Uh, interesting. But they weren't together. And as we, as we go through this this morning, I hope, that, I hope that we feel some of that emotion. We're in Matthew chapter 1, and I want to start reading in verse 18. And we kind of go bit by bit as we go through here. It says in, in verse 18, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. I want to stop there first. They're not together. And a couple of weeks ago, I talked about this whole process of the marriage, and I'm not going to get into that again today. But they're, they're in the waiting period. The, 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 the marriage is official, but there's a period of a long time here where they're preparing separately. They're, they're in purity, and they're waiting with anticipation. And Joseph um, would have gone home to his father's house. This is legally binding, every bit here. Um, not necessarily engaged, as um, this translation says. Uh, betrothed in this context is actually legally married. They're just not together yet. And so they have hopes and they have dreams and they're thinking of the family and the future that they're going to have together. And the horizon, as far as they could see from now, had been completely mapped out for them. You understand that? You, f you feel that? Uh, but everything was about to change. The, the entire horizon of their lives was about to change. We continue reading there still in verse 18. But before the marriage took place... Well, she was still a virgin. She became pregnant. She became pregnant. They're, they're not together. 
he had been to her house. They had gone through all of the early marriage stuff and the covenant and the payment and the promises. And then he had gone back to his father's house and he was preparing the place. And there was this time period that it was, could have been up to a year where they were separated. So they're not together. They're in waiting and in purity and preparing that ground, waiting for the day. And as I said, legally binding, officially married, um, but she's pregnant, and he knows he's not the father. She's still a virgin, and, th and that's important because this whole period was all about purity and expecting and waiting. Uh, but all of their life's hopes and all of their life's dreams were obliterated. Do you see that? Look at that from Joseph's perspective. Everything that they were hoping for and dreaming and planning was gone, probably feeling a lot of anger and jealous, jealousy. This is crushing news. And now all of a sudden, there's new fears, and there's unknown, and there's confusion. Everything they had planned had abruptly changed. Have you ever been in a situation like that? We continue in that verse, the end of that same verse, it says, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. How do you communicate that to your husband? Yeah, I'm pregnant, but it's God. How does that become a God thing? Mary, at this point, may have been convinced that this was God. We don't know how far along she was here. We don't know the timeline here. Uh, we know that from Luke chapter 2, she ran and spent three months at Elizabeth's house. But we don't know whether she found out from the angel that she was going to be pregnant and she immediately ran to Elizabeth's house. It didn't say anything to Joseph yet until after. We don't know if that's the way it was. We don't know if she immediately ran to Joseph and told him and, and, and with tears and anxiety and confusion trying to sort this out. And then she ran to Elizabeth and maybe they didn't even talk for three months. I can't imagine if that's the case, what Joseph went through in those three months. When did, when did the angel come to Joseph? Was it three months after he found out? How do you endure those three months with that tension and that anxiety and that anger building and that frustration? We don't know any of those kind of things. We don't know if she ran to Elizabeth's and then while she was there, this was uh, really confirmed in her. And she came back with excitement and energy to tell Joseph. Um, we don't know any of that. All we know at this point is she's been told by the angel and she has told him. I don't know if you ever wonder about those kind of things and how this worked and how they responded um, maybe one day I can sit down with them in heaven and find out how that worked. But if he could put the confusion and all of the emotion of that aside for a second, how do you even begin to process that? How do you even get to the place where, where you could even imagine that she's actually telling the truth? Because... When she came to tell him, it was before the angel had told him, and she would be just as emotional as he would. And yet, um, how could she tell him that she's pregnant and yet have joy in her heart? How could she look at him and, and, and how, how could he feel like she's treated and yet she's telling him with love in her eyes? and excitement, and joy. Does that make any sense emotionally? Verse 19. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Joseph was a good man, it said. He was a righteous man. He was a guy that was going to do what was right. What's the right thing to do? 
Now, at this point, he had no understanding of what God was up to. And when you look at it from that perspective, there, this is a no-win situation for him. It's a no-win situation. Uh, all he could see was this, and it was a disaster. The entire horizon of his life had changed. Because if he walked away, and left Mary, then all of the disgrace and shame would be on Mary. Is in that culture, that was not okay. And in that culture, if he divorced her, it would be loud and public and shaming, and she would live with that the rest of her life. Do you know the story of the scarlet letter? Can you picture that with Mary the rest of her life? If he had walked away. But, but what if, what if, um, if he stayed, if he married her, the disgrace wouldn't be on Mary, all of the disgrace would be on him. And so if, if he had any inkling to protect his, his reputation and his job and who he was in the community, then he would divorce her and save his reputation. But he was torn here. He said he wanted to divorce her quietly, which would have been pretty much impossible. How do we just hush, hush this and make this silent so that Mary doesn't go through public disgrace, so that he doesn't go through public disgrace? None of that even makes sense. There's no way to protect her from public shame, and there's no way at the same time to protect his reputation. So when the angel comes to to him and says, Mary is pregnant through the Holy Spirit. He had everything to lose if he took her as his wife. This is the most difficult course of action in this that he could have chosen. In that culture, if she messed up, she's done. The rest of her life, she's going to live with public disgrace. He didn't want that for her. So he says, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Anybody take that stance usually? We can do this. I'll figure this out. And, and, and so in, 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 I'll find a way to end the pain, to move forward. And culturally, the right thing to do, the right thing to do is public ugliness. It's to walk away and she becomes shamed. So in verse 19, he decided in his heart to divorce her quietly, as quietly, not as publicly, as quietly as he can. Then God calls for the opposite action. God calls him to do the opposite of what he thought was best. God calls him to do the opposite of what society says is the right thing. God calls him to do the opposite of what culture expected. And it was the most difficult course of action. So if he did that, if he walked away and did what was completely expected of him in that situation, think of what he would have missed. Either way, the joy of the wedding process, it's halfway through this process, the joy is gone of that. All of their hopes and dreams for their future, it's all smushed. At this point, is this good? Or is this a disaster? Have you ever been in a situation where you can't even tell that? Because everything about this was a complete disaster. And how do you even know? No matter what they did, no matter how they responded, if he took her as his wife or whether he divorced her, all of their hopes and dreams are gone. And the entire future was changed. I think we've all experienced moments like that. And sometimes uh, something is horrible, uh, and, and we're freaking out. But actually, in truth, 
unbeknownst to us, God is doing something amazing. Joseph. This was a blessing that he saw as a problem. It was going to challenge his faith more than anything else. It was going to force him to trust God more than anything before. It was going to take every ounce of his character. And it was going to alter the entire course of the rest of his life. And they would both live with this decision the rest of their lives. This was a disaster. No, it wasn't. This was the most incredible blessing God could possibly give them. In the middle of that, how do you know the difference? Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you're to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophets. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now that, that passage is from Isaiah chapter 7, seven or 800 years before Jesus was born. It's one of over 300 prophecies about Jesus, and Joseph would have known that. He went to school. This was what they would have learned. He knew uh, that this was talking about the Messiah coming the savior of the world. He knew the, the, that this would have been the, what the angel was saying. This is the fulfillment of hundreds of prophecies. And he knew that Mary was already carrying this baby. And Joseph had a decision to make. Do I really believe this is God? Or is this just really messed up? That's his choice. And I don't know about you, but I think I've been in situations where I'm trying to figure out, this is horrible. This is changing everything. This is screwing up all our plans. Is this God? Or is this just really messed up? Do you know that kind of situation? I see this as where he is. Verse 24, Joseph woke up. He did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife but he did not have sexual relations with her until the, her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. Both Mary and Joseph through this. This is the hardest experience of their entire lives. But later on, do you think if they were given the choice that they would rewind and change it? What if they chose to do what was socially expected of them? What if they chose to, to mistrust each other? What if they chose um, to, to cover it? What if he chose to hold on to his reputation? Instead of listening to God's call and following God's plan as bizarre as it was, he would have missed the joy. I think he came really, really close here to missing the joy. And I hope you're able to compare this to some things in our own lives, in your own life. How often do we, uh, how often do we lie to save face, even though we know God is whispering in our ear about truth? Have, have we ever taken the easy way out or taken the easy road when we know that God's way might be way more challenging, even though we know it's right. What if G Joseph had said no to what God told him in the dream? What would he have missed? If Joseph had done what he thought was best, Think about that. As a human being sitting down, mulling this over, thinking it through, tossing and turning, and deciding 
this is what is best. If he had decided to do what he thought is best instead of what God said was best, then he would have missed God's future. He would have missed God's best. He would have missed all of God's joy and the blessing that God had. He would have missed it all. He would have missed the joy. This isn't a man saying, I've got this. And I know most of us are prone to that. This is a man saying, God's got this. And I will choose to trust him and to follow him. It'll probably take every ounce of his character. It'll probably test him more than anything else in his life. This will probably alter the course of the entire rest of his life. But at this point, he didn't know any of the details. He knew very few of the details. He didn't have any idea where this would go or what this would look like or what would happen. But he did know the stories that had been told for generations. He had all the Sunday school answers. He had known the story of the Savior that was going to come someday and save them. But right here, right at this moment, God was launching his rescue plan for the world. God was reaching out into a broken and dark world. He was reaching out to you. He was reaching out to me. Now, Joseph didn't know any of that, but he was, God was reaching out and launching his rescue plan. He was bringing joy and hope and peace and love into the world and presenting to all of us a completely new horizon, altering every aspect of our lives with a completely different path to walk. And Joseph came so close to missing all of the joy. Now we sing this song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and there's a phrase in there that I thought this week, all the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. We sing that, right? We know that song? All the hopes and all the fears of all of your years are met in Jesus. And Joseph could have said that, that night holding Jesus after he had been born, all his hopes and all his dreams for his future completely gone and changed. But all of his fears and all of the unknown of all the years of his life was was met in Jesus that night. That night, as Joseph may be sitting on a bale of hay, Nothing else mattered. Joseph would have still been in store coming up for lots of ridicule and public shame. Because this is not acceptable to have a baby before you're born. And, and, and they would have lived with that for the rest of their lives. There was difficult days to come. It was not over yet. But hope and peace and love and joy was resting right in his arms. And God has a history of taking things that look like disasters, broken, difficult situations, and turning them into miracles of joy. Do you know that? Let me tell you something I know for sure. And if you join us starting in January and reading through the, uh, the Bible and listening to the daily podcast, there's one thing that she says every single day on the podcast. I don't think you'll get tired of hearing this. She says the same thing every day. She says, he is where the joy is. And I think that night, Joseph knew that. He is where the joy is. Jesus is where the joy is. That very moment when Jesus was born, he is where the joy is. Let me pray. 
Father in heaven, we can see as we read through this story and we see in the, the corresponding details in the book of Luke that when the shepherds heard, they were full of joy. When the shepherds ran to the manger uh, to see the baby, they were so full of joy, running around telling everybody in the middle of the night. The wise men coming and opening their treasures before him and worshiping in awe. Mary and Joseph, nobody had to convince them of the joy. But God, joy is a missing ingredient in so many of our lives. But this is the promise of Jesus. Joy is the presence of Jesus in our lives. God, would you bring joy? Would you bring joy? Let us see in a whole new way that Jesus is where the joy is. Amen. I want us to think about Joseph. Um, D Dave and Jaden are going to sing a song for us. And it's a song you've heard a million times, maybe in a different way. But as they, as, as they play this and as we listen to these words, away in a manger, no crib for his bed, little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head, the stars in the heaven looked down from the bright sky, Look down where he lay, the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. I want you to imagine Joseph having been on this emotional roller coaster and probably here completely exhausted. The exhausted of months of this emotion, exhausted of the travel. Anybody traveled across the country with little kids? Or, or a wife who's nine plus months pregnant? You're not sleeping in the car that night. They find the place to stay. They're completely exhausted from all of this. And then she says, um, we're ready to go. <laughs> no, right? And finally, a few hours later, this is all over. Joseph is sitting on a hay bale in the corner, maybe looking at this scene. So full of joy. So ripped up with all kinds of emotions. But the huge smile on his face. Or, 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 or holding this baby. Looking into the Christ child's face. Dads, you remember holding your first baby? As Jane, Dave and Jaden sing this for us. Picture the joy in which Joseph could have sang this song to them. Sky and look down where 